Welcome back guys. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to use the free FSR3 frame generation mod with Hitman 3, Deliver a Smash and Warhammer 40,000 Dark Tide. I'll be using the mod developed by Newcam9. It works only on RTX GPUs. We'll be testing these games on my Windows PC that has Ryzen 3700X processor and an RTX 2070 Super GPU. I have already tested this mod in multiple games, observed performance improvements in all of them. But in some games, there were some graphical bugs. In some cases, the game's interface was flickering. Hopefully, these issues will get resolved with the future builds of the mod. I have already covered the mod's version 0.7 build. No new release since the last two days, so I'll be using the same build in this video. So let's download all of the required files. First, we have the standard version of the mod. Just click on manual download here. Then click on slow download. You need to have a free Nexus mods account in order to download any stuff from this website. Go back and download the DLSS Tweaks edition of the mod. Click on Manual Download. Then click on Slow Download again. Then we need to download DLSS Tweaks mod files by Amos. Same process, click on Manual Download. Then click on Slow Download. I was not able to get the standard version of the mod working with Hitman 3. However, its DLSS Tweaks edition work. I'll show you the process. Extract the contents of the archive file corresponding to DLSS Twix edition. You can always refer to the README for install instructions. Now extract the contents of DLSS Twix mod file by Emus. There's the archive file. You only need to execute enable nvidia sig override dot registry file once. Don't need to execute it again and again whenever you try to run a different game. You can revert the changes by running. Disable nvidia sig override dot registry file, then the mod will stop working. Now copy these two files nvngx.dll and dlss tweaks.ini. Open the games install directory. This is it. Open the retail folder. This is the directory where we need to paste the files. Now copy the DLL files corresponding to FSR3 frame generation mod. These two files. Go back to Hitman 3's install directory. Paste the files here. You basically need to paste the mod files where hitman3.exe file is present. Now we need to copy the games directory. Just click on the directory bar here. Open dlss tweaks.ini file. Scroll down to the middle. Look for this line of text dll path overrides. You need to remove the semicolon at the start of this line. Select the complete directory here. Replace it with the games install directory. We need to add the name of the DLL wrapper file. This one. Paste it right here. Click on file, click on save. Now we need to enable hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Right click anywhere on the desktop and select display settings. Then click on graphics. Click on change default graphics setting. Make sure this toggle is enabled under hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Now we need to enable vSync from NVIDIA control panel. Make sure your GP drivers are up to date. Here just click on global settings. Scroll down and set vSync to on. If you want to apply the settings on a per game basis, just click on program settings. From this bar, select the games exe file. Click on add. Look for the games exe file here. There's Hitman 3. Click on add selected program. Scroll down. Set vertical sync to on. Apply. That's it. We are ready to run the game. Games launcher will pop up. Just click on play. Hitman 3 is also known as Hitman World of Assassination if you also own the first two Hitman games. 
it basically includes the campaigns of hitman 1 2 and 3 graphic setting full hd resolution vsync disable nvidia reflex low latency setting enable there is the option to enable or disable frame generation i have set it to off dlss set to quality ray tracing enable i have maxed out the settings start the game yeah there is agent 47 here we are getting around 50 fps Forty-four FPS, hitting the GP bottleneck. Yeah, this area is very demanding. So many non-playable characters. Lighting looks beautiful. Now I'll enable frame generation. Usually, it is recommended to restart the game after enabling frame generation. So, if you encounter any performance issues or bugs, do this. Alright, after enabling frame generation, FPS increased up to 78. Yeah, game is running smoothly. This is amazing. When the game was running at 40 FPS, I did observe some sluggishness. Seventy-eight FPS with interpolated frames does feel smoother than native forty FPS. That sluggishness is gone now. Okay, so not observing any graphical bugs. The bald head of Agent Forty Seven looks so smooth. Game's interface is also not flickering. No ghosting issues. Impressed by the implementation of this mod in this game. Now I'll be running the next game. I was not able to get the mod working with Dying Light Part Two. Now I'll be showing you how to get it working with. Deliver us mass. Again, I'll be using the DLSS tweaks edition of the mod. It's the same process again. Copy the DLL files corresponding to the frame generation mod. Open the game's install directory. And just click on the three dots here. Click on manage. Then click on this folder icon here. This is the game's install directory. Just open this folder, Deliver us mass. Open binaries folder. Open Win64 folder. Paste the DLL files here. You won't see this override prompt in your case if you're doing the process for the first time. Hit place. Now copy the files corresponding to emus mod. Paste them in the games directory where the games exe file is present. Replace. Copy the game's install directory from here. Open DLSS tweaks.ini file. Scroll down to the middle. Find this line of text DLL path overrides. Remove the semicolon at the start of this line. Last one. Select the entire directory. Replace it with the game's install directory. Add the name of the wrapper file. Paste it here. Click on file, then save. That's it, we are ready to run the game. This game was given away for free by Epic Games. Display settings, full HD resolution, DLSS set to quality, there is the option to enable or disable frame generation. First I'll run the game without it. Using disable, render set to DirectX 12. Don't run the game using DirectX 11 render. Frame generation option will not pop up. Reflex enable. Graphic setting using the Epic preset. Ray tracing enabled. Yeah, there is a character. Here we are getting around 80 FPS. Hitting the GP bottleneck. I'll just enable frame generation now. Apply. 
FPS increased up to 126. Game is running very smoothly now. Way smoother than before. FPS almost got doubled. Controls are responsive. I'm not observing any graphical bugs. Hair of my character looks normal. Not fuzzy at all. Not observing any ghosting around the character model as well. Okay, need to use my plasma cutter. Cut the metallic sheet. So now I'll be running the next game. Okay. For Warhammer 40,000 Dark Tide, I'll be using the standard version of the mod, extract its contents. You need to execute the disable NVIDIA signature checks.registry file only once. Don't need to run it again and again whenever you try a different game. To revert the changes, you just need to execute restore NVIDIA signature checks.registry file. Copy these two DLL files. Paste them in the game's install directory. I'll be running the game pass version of this game. Click on the three dots here, click on manage, click on files, click on browse. Open Warhammer 40,000 Dark Tide folder. Open content folder. Open binaries folder. Paste the DLL files here. That's it, we are ready to run the game. Games launcher, click on settings, full SD resolution, VSync disabled, DLSS set to quality. No frame generation option here. It will be available in the in-game settings. In-game video settings and there is the option to enable or disable frame generation. First I'll run the game without it. And yeah, now I can control my character here. FPS is around 90. GPU load is around 80%. Now I'll enable frame generation. Okay, so the FPS increased up to 140. That's really good to see. But I am observing some bugs. Just check out the game's interface. It is flickering. Observe the same bug in Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Yeah, this is a known issue. Hopefully this issue will get fixed with the future builds of the mod. There's not much I can do about it. So that's it for the video guys. I'll end it here. I hope you find it useful. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.